today we're going to be speaking about the first major of the year, the Masters. The one where everyone looks forward to every year. It's possibly the best major. I would say so. Yeah? So, yeah, I would say so. So today we have Dave and Dan from Your Golf Travel, obviously, who are specialists in this subject. I would say specialists. Yeah, as I said, this would probably be our mastermind subject. I think so, yeah. yeah. I agree. So yeah, I haven't been to the I haven't been to the Masters, so I feel like I'm gonna learn quite a bit from you guys today. Hopefully. And I'm gonna be there next year. <laughs> I'm just gonna give you a little nudge. Okay. Just give me the yeah. invite. So Dave, what do you do at your golf travel? Uh, so I'm part of the long haul and tournaments team. Uh, so I'm one of the guys that would pick up the phone when you ring in, talking about the Masters, talking about a lovely trip to Mauritius. Uh, but you know, mainly the tournament side of things, which is uh, which is great fun to do. It's sending people on bucket list experiences. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's great. Are you done? Uh, I head up the events and tournaments department at Your Golf Travel, so I look after all of the tournaments such as the the Masters, the Open, the Ryder Cup, the Solheim Cup, and any events we do outside of those tournaments. Dan gets all the fun stuff. Yeah. He's, uh, <laughs> he's he's got one of the best jobs in uh, in YTT. Yeah, going to the Masters that is the dream job. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I've been three times, fortunately now, so I feel like I'm pretty well versed in in what to expect. I've kind of got over the uh, the awe that you you experience when you walk in those uh, those Augusta gates that I know you experienced for the first time this year. So yeah, I'm I'm very fortunate. I've been three times. I love taking people there, watching their experiences, watching their eyes light up as they're going for the first time. It's incredible. I mean, I know that you felt that way when we yeah. Went. Uh, massively overwhelming is actually how I would say um, but a point that Dan just made there when people come back and give you their badges the excitement you can see it they've just yeah. had the best time but there isn't there isn't anything I've ever experienced that's quite like walking yeah. down through the ticket gate you've got the practice ground to your left you sweep round to where the store is then all of a sudden you're on the first where the iconic scoreboard is and it's like wow we're, like, we're here this is it is amazing that first time is wow yeah isn't it it's, it's kind of takes your breath away kind of wow yeah i'd say I, I, always, I always say to people it's it is overwhelming you just need to be prepared yeah. for that when you walk in uh, because it is like nothing else yeah i think a really good point that you made actually one of my favorite parts of being at all of these tournaments events like st andrews for the open this year is people coming back and telling you about their experience and the day yeah i get as excited about that as, as anything else to be honest because I mean you see it on TV you know you've watched it all the years on TV yeah. but it's not really unmatched when you're there because when I had the experience when I yeah. went to St Andrews I was like wow this yeah. is the real thing yeah. this is it's, it's incredible so another thing about the Masters which I always hear from people working on social media talking about it is the food prices yeah so what is your go to order at well, the Masters if you're going to go to the food stall yeah. what's the thing you're going to order but firstly of all the tournaments and events that happen worldwide the Masters is unbelievable value for money you go to the Open you go to these other these other tournaments and, and it's expensive um, but you go into the Masters and you get your pimento cheese sandwich for $1.50 you get your beer for three and a half bucks it's it's incredible that they've managed to keep those those prices to where they are but for me, if I'm going into the concession store, I'm ordering an egg sandwich, egg salad sandwich. I'm probably having a beer, just one, and then maybe a peach sandwich, a peach um, sorbet ice cream sandwich, which they didn't have this year. Gutted. Short, short, shortage of peaches. <laughs> shortage of peaches, yeah, worldwide. Pandemic of peaches. I'd have to go for the barbecue sandwich. Yeah. The barbecue sandwich was good. Yeah. Being a, being a meat fan, I wouldn't go anywhere near any of the salad stuff. <laughs> But the cookies are good as well. They like, are. Just, yeah. to, just to keep on you when you're walking around, the cookies are good. The beers, the crow's nest beer was very good. Yeah. And you get your commemorative cup that you can yeah, you keep uh, your take cups. home. That's nice. Oh, I use them every day. <laughs> I'll be taking loads of those. I'll just keep going yeah. back there. It's good, for, beer. good for barbecues. It's good yeah, for absolutely. When you do outdoor stuff, it's perfect. Yeah, and yeah. seeing the guys come back to our hospitality area with their kind of stacks of four or five Masters Cups that you know are gonna be in the cupboard being used yeah. for years to come is, is great. And like other purchases, obviously, I know about you <laughs> going to the shop. I don't know if you've seen the TikTok, you know, you went viral on TikTok about yeah. how much you spent I in the master shop. I think you had a bit of a moment. <laughs> yeah, you? I blacked out, I blacked out. <laughs> it wasn't all for me, it wasn't all for me, but the store is amazing. Everything you could possibly want is there, whether it's a, 
a dog bowl or uh, a baby sized caddy suit or anything <laughs> any, everything is logoed it is amazing and yeah. it is quite well priced I think I really don't think it's overpriced no and, and, you know certainly when you look at going to the open for example or, or the rider car all the, the merch and the stash is again not overpriced but it's you consider it expensive yeah. I think but when you go to the masters and you get those kind of items that Dave's talking about you're not spending silly money like 20 25 bucks for a hat it's that's fine I think anyone would expect to pay that but just going back I think the first time again you go you go around the kind of windy queue into the master shop and you it's like being at Disney almost. You've got that excitement of what's to come, what we're going to spend. Yeah, all you hear is what what are people buying. Yeah. The little groups that yeah. you, you go past in the queue. Absolutely. Everyone's talking about, what, what am I going to get? And it's always busy. Yeah. The whole week, you kind of meander around and shuffle past people. I think you may have mentioned it the other day, the stats on someone buys a hat every second at the Masters. Yeah, the, the number of hats sold equates to like yeah. one a second. And the queue is just constant. But it's amazing. It's like... Toys R Us of kids stores but for golf yeah. it's, it's incredible it really is they've got a very well oiled machine there. yeah yeah. you stand at the shirt wall and it's like it's like the uh, calling bingo yeah. you just <laughs> shout out what number you want and what size and yeah. they just bring it to you it's, yeah. yeah it's quite it's, an experience it's brilliant yeah, yeah. so I, I, I did over the couple of days that I went in I did just under $2,000 $2, yeah. but so it wasn't all for me they're great gifts aren't they like yeah. getting, getting people a hat or a a quarter zip, like a quarter zip was a hundred bucks. Yeah, which you'd pay more than that. Yeah, it's a light flex uh, as well. Uh, yeah, 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 you turn oh, up to your see. club on a Saturday yeah, yeah. in your master's yeah. jacket. You're like, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I went to the masters. Yeah, hundred oh, percent. I'm on my way this weekend, and I've got a master shirt for, <laughs> for each round. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the red for the Sunday, obviously. Well, no, no. Actually, I didn't get anything red. I've got no. green. Yeah, green, got green. Got masters green. green. But like it's the only place you can get the masters merch. Officially, so. officially, yeah, it's the only place you can get. It. I mean. As with all uh, providers, you can find most of the things that you like on the internet, but it's not like having been yeah. there and purchased it from the shop. It's yeah. Yeah, If you want to purchase it officially, the only way to do it is at the shop when you're there. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, I will definitely be in there. If I am going to the Masters, I will be there. I'm going to save up all my money now, yeah. all my pocket money. Yeah, get to saving. Buy everything. Yeah. full gear so when you're spectating the golf at the Masters is there a favourite hole like where you like to sit or spectate I think from my point of view I've definitely got a favourite hole I wouldn't necessarily say go and stand there all day yeah. um, but I just remember uh, 2017 was the first time I went in and you had that duel between Justin Rose and Garcia which was incredible but anyway I always remember just being completely overawed by the 10th and how almost vertical that drop is from the tee down to the green. It kind of makes its way back up towards the green, but it's like a ski soap, isn't yeah. it? We, yeah, we, we both spoke about it. And you hit, it's a, it's a blind tee shot because you're hitting into the abyss and it just goes down. So I, I think that's my favourite hole because of how interesting it is. Um, vantage point wise there's so many there's so many points that you can go to and sit on the course I'll never forget kind of the the hairs that stood up on my arms when I first walked down 11 and Amen Corner comes into view I get goosebumps now talking about it it's it's just incredible as a golf fan and someone who loves golf that's the pinnacle yeah. in my opinion so vantage point you, you have to go and sit there but my favourite hole is 10. Favourite hole 10? Interesting. Yeah. What would mine be? Um, probably 12. Yeah. I think because of what it is, the history behind it, Nicholas always saying hit it over the bunker, I think it's definitely 12. And yeah. I, I, I was lucky enough to see Woods hit into 12. And that's probably the, the greatest sporting yeah. moment of uh, I've ever seen live yeah. in my life. It was... It's like it's own little arena, isn't it? It is, yeah. So you, behind the tee, you've got a really big grandstand, but then because of the the slope on the uh, on the, on the ground around it, there's just so many people. There's like there's probably twenty rows of chairs, mm. and then well, probably more than that actually. Yeah. And then there's a good probably twenty rows of people behind it. Then the grandstand. Yeah. It turns into a really good amphitheater because you've got eleven green, the whole of the twelfth, and then you can see thirteen tee, and then then they're around the corner, coming out of aiming corner. Yeah. 
So I, I for me, it's there. Like, yeah. I, I just I can't, I can't argue with that. I can't get over can't it. Can't argue with that. And behind the grandstand, you've got a concession stand. So you, you know you've got everything you need. For and there's a little store. If you, know, yeah. if you forget to pick up a hat in the in the shop, or if it's really really sunny, you can you can nip there. Yeah. I would definitely say for me twelve, or the behind sixteen. Yeah, that's a good spot. That is a good spot. Because there was a hole in one, wasn't there? Yeah. Um, was it in the practice day? Or was it on the Thursday? Uh, I can't remember. It was, it was Stuart Sink, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Stuart, it was Stuart Sink. Sink. I wasn't in for that, but if you sat there yeah. for all four days, you're going to see. You're probably going to see a hole in one. Yeah. And, and if you know, we we do tickets where you just go in on a practice day, which is amazing, by the way. And you see the skimming across the, yeah, the kind of saw pond that. and stuff like that. It's, it's just a really fun place. And as serious as major golf is, to see those guys having fun in that way and, you know, so many things about the Masters are unique and that's that's one of them. But it's really cool, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Six, 16's a great hole. We were talking about this earlier, actually, mm. just before we, we came on air, so to speak. But we don't quite realise how close 16 and the 6th green is. Yeah. It's something you don't see on the TV. And they just, I just never realised they were so close yeah, together. Definitely. Just never realised. Yeah. Because I've heard people say that with like seeing it on the TV, it's a lot. When you're actually there in person, it's very yeah. undulated. There's a lot of slopes. Oh, yeah. And you, you can never do it justice from the yeah. TV. And, and that is probably the most coined phrase of people that, you know, you come back and speak to us and tell us about their day is that I just can't believe how different it is mm. in real life because you... you you just can't translate that through a, a television lens. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. I know the pros are walking sort of middle of the fairway, middle of the green, mm. but they walk a long way. It's a, it's a slog around there. Up and down. Yeah. And I remember after the morning we had on the Thursdays, like, oh, I'm absolutely dead. <laughs> but these guys are doing it four days in a row under yeah. all that pressure, all that concentration. It's, yeah, it's mad. It's, it, is a, it is a slog around there. It is, but, for sure. I don't think you find many people complaining about that sort of slog, would you? No, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to play that. Imagine playing yeah. Augusta. That yeah. has to dream. Yeah, yeah. that would be, be it, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. The pinnacle of, of golf. <laughs> You've won at life. Yeah, completed it. Yeah. yeah. Would you shoot <laughs> handicap round there? No. Well, there's a, there's a silly stat, isn't there? They reckon uh, a single-figure handicapper won't break 90 off of the master tees. Okay. But off the member tees, it's not that long. Right. It doesn't play anywhere near as well. You're pretty good yourself, so you, you yeah, fancy I, your chances. I, I fancy myself off the member tees breaking 80. Yeah. I, think... I fancy myself breaking 90 off the master's tees. Okay. That's confident. I yeah. like it. I, I just think, having seen it, the biggest challenge of being in around the greens, right? You hear it. You hear it from the players. You hear it from anyone that's been and, and, and watched the tournament just how difficult it is around the greens. Yeah. Like if you're out millimetres, centimetres, the ball's rolling 20, 30, 40 yards away back to your feet in some instances. So I think that's where we get your stuck. score's won and lost, yeah. isn't it? And you see that on the practice days, the, the the players or the caddies will be tossing down the the um, the discs and yeah. they'll just be hitting chips to points where they know the flags are going to be. Yeah. and. They'll put themselves in the short-sided places and try and hit those shots. And that's what was another really great thing about practice yeah. day. Not only can you get all your shopping done, that yeah. sort of thing, take your camera in, but you see them playing shots that perhaps they wouldn't do in a tournament yeah. because of the nature of the practice, Yeah, which yeah, is so. quite cool. Like, yeah. We watched Spieth around the second green, and some of the shots he was hitting was bonkers. Like, yeah. how, how, how are they just that good? Just in case. How are they that good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I know you just briefly mentioned on the practice round. So if someone was to... Uh, book a package would you say definitely include one of the practice rounds well yeah. it's, it's horses for courses right um we're very not lucky but we've, we've been doing the masters now for over a decade we, we sell all types of pack packages and we can bespoke sell to your needs from having been there on a, on a practice day and having the memories now and you know visually being able to go back to look at photos as a kind of yes. memento I'd always recommend it. The players are a bit less um, focused. Uh, focused may be the wrong word, but they will interact with the crowd a little bit more. And with each other as well. And yeah, and with each other. It's a good, a good point. But it's just great fun more than anything. Like, like Dave said, they might hit five shots off a tee on one of the par threes, and every single shot is a different type of shot to a different place. So it's just really interesting. And yeah. 
I think being able to have a few photos to take back with you yeah, is quite a nice, uh, nice memento. Yeah. So what would be, like, say, like, your hidden gem of the Masters, something that someone who's been would only know? Okay, uh, shall I go first? Yeah, go on. So there is a south entrance. Um, we direct everyone to the north entrance, and most of the patrons will always go via the north gate. Uh, but there is a south a south gate, which brings you in at the back of 16, but there is a store there. It's a very small store. Um, many of you may not know that they, at the Masters, they have a new gnome out each year, and that is you know, where you go and get your gnomes, is at the south store. Uh, they're quite a collector's item. I know one of our uh, clients that's been five times, I think. Shout out, Dave. <laughs> yeah, but, um, and he's collected all five uh, from when he's been, so... He knows, he knows. Um, but yeah, that would be my kind of little gem is for, you know, if you want to go, especially if you're going on a Sunday and you want to get in a great position, if you know about that entrance at the at the South Gate and you can go in and get your chair down at 16, what a place to be able to get your chair down for, for the final day. That's good, yeah. I, I didn't know there was a store down there. Yes. It would have just been somewhere else I could have bought some stuff. <laughs> You'd have spent it's three grand. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's <laughs> more money gone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what mine would be, in all honesty. Um, having only been once, I think it was just more of a case of taking as much in as possible. Yeah. Um, I think it goes back to, you know, once you've been, you kind of know where the bottlenecks are of mm. the patrons. Um, I think, you know, the, one thing I've, maybe people don't realise is between... The first fairway and the second green is just a massive, massive area where, where there's no golf. It's like a park. Yeah. It's that sort of size. So if you want to if you want to miss the crowds after going in through the, the north entrance, you can just cut across the first and head straight down to like the second green. So if you know perhaps that Tiger's just teed off. Yeah. Get ahead. You can beat the crowds down to the, the second green. So, you know, that, that kind of thing would be really interesting for people that are perhaps trying to follow a group but don't want to be get caught up in mm. the crowds and get ahead of them because yeah. the second they'll go out in two yeah and definitely brings out a bit of excitement mm. you know louis had an albatross mm. imagine getting in front of the crowds and seeing that yeah There's, you don't see very many twos on a, on a par five at augusta no so yeah i would probably say you know knowing that you can you can cut across the first and, and get ahead of the crowds would be invaluable yeah there's a lot of uh literally every hole you can cut across at some point as well can't you yeah it's it's, it's just a spectator's dream really uh the course never feels overcrowded unless tiger's there yeah um but yeah you can you can get around the course fairly quickly um although you can't run that's yeah no running no, no running, running. <laughs> so would you say it's the best course you've been to like spectator wise for an event so i know obviously you've been to the open you've been yeah. to us opens mm -hmm. before yeah so how does the masters and augusta sort of match up to that I think because of what it is, more than anything, nothing quite compares. Um, like you said, I went to the, the US Open at Brookline earlier on in the year, and it was a great course for spectating. It's an interesting course. It was pretty busy, but it's not Augusta National. And I think that overtakes everything. Even, you know, St. Andrews back in July this year, really well set up for, for spectators. I didn't think it was that easy to get from one place to another, probably more because of the course design. You're going all the way down and then all the way back, back. isn't it? It's, it's just, yeah, I think from a spectator's point purely, yeah, it's there every year. Yeah. They know that they have to make it a good event for spectators to go to and, and, and see in person as well as a great event on TV. So I think for those reasons, yes, I think it is probably the best course i've been to from a spectator's point of view yeah i think that as well people that aren't so much interested in the tournament just want to see augusta national yeah, yeah. there'll be people that will happily go to a practice round yeah. because they just want to see augusta national they're not mm -hmm. interested in well not not interested might be the, the wrong the wrong word no, no i know what you mean they're, they're not so much bothered about the masters itself mm. but they're more augusta national fans and want to be able to see the golf course that no one can get on yeah exactly it's like the exclusive exclusivity of it. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just yeah. uh it's what like it is, isn't the, it? The Walker Cup's going to Cypress Point in a few years' time. Yeah. That will have a lot of fans. Yeah. yeah. Because they want to because see Because they want to Cyprus see Cypress Point. Point. As much as they want to see the Walker Cup. Yeah. 
yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. Onto the golf. What is your favorite memory of the Masters? Like growing up, maybe watching it on TV, or even like when you've been to the yeah. event. I, I'll, I'll answer both. I think my favorite moment from the Masters actually was, mm. you know, two thousand and nineteen when Tiger won. So many moments before that that you can draw back on, but that just. I don't, I think you coined the phrase, I don't think there was a dry eye in the room. No, absolutely not. It was amazing. To see what he'd been through, to come back and win arguably the most difficult or the most prestigious golf tournament in the world. It's just something else. And then you look at the chip-in that he made on 16 all those years ago, that was incredible. Um, my favourite moment was I was fortunate enough on the Sunday in 2017 to be at the back of 14 sitting on a chair, someone had vacated. And I saw Justin Rose and Garcia come through. And I think on that hole, I think Rose made a bogey and Garcia made a birdie. And it kind of shifted. You can, don't quote me on that, because I'm not sure. But it, it just felt like a momentum shift. And then I went from there, I went back to the Your Golf Travel Hospitality Unit and, and watched the rest unfold on the TV. and as a European fan, as a kind of Garcia fan, as a Justin Rose fan, it, it was everything that I could have wanted from a major tournament and the Masters. So there's two answers there, but yeah. I think, you know, what, what's yours? The Woods winning was incredible, wasn't it? Mm. I, I remember him standing on the 12th green while Molinari hit at the water. Yeah. Did Fino hit at the water as well? Because I, I remember him only the only one across the I creek. Think, yeah, I think And he just sort right. of stood there going, well, what are you playing at? Yeah. <laughs> I've you, done this so yeah. many times. Come on, man. Yeah, exactly. This this old dog. <laughs> um, but for things like Bubba in mm. the playoff when he's hit that yeah. wedge out of the trees. That only a lefty could. Yeah. Only a lefty oh, could yeah. hit that. It was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Or, or Mickelson out the pine straw yeah. on 13. 13 yeah. It's like these iconic shots that I think only somewhere like Augusta National can really yeah. really produce. Yeah. Because it's there every year. So it's like yeah, exactly. etched in your mind. Exactly. Yeah. Um, in terms of memory of being there is just seeing Woods hitting 12. Yeah. That will live with me forever. Yeah. I've been to uh, European Cup finals, uh, saw Oasis live before they broke up. Like these, these are two things that are like, wow, I'm glad yeah, I've yeah, done yeah. that. But seeing Woods hitting 12 at Augusta National yeah. is top of the pile. I think you see it on TV, but you, you get even more of it when you're there. Every tournament that Tiger Woods attends, it's just crazy how many yeah. people just want to see him hit a shot. Yeah. You know, he moves the needle. We all know that. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I don't see how you could top seeing Woods. No, 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 I don't think there is anything. That's the first time I'd seen him. Mm. So on the on the Monday, uh, he was on the practice ground. These boards on... So around the around the golf course, there's uh, there's boards that will tell you who's on the practice ground yeah. and what tee they're going to be practicing from. And um, Cy and I were on the course. We saw Woods' name up, so he was on the practice on the practice grounds. Like, there we go. Yeah. And we were coming back because we needed to be back with you guys yeah. um, in the hospitality. And as we were walking back towards the first, you just saw this swarm of people going down <laughs> the second. So we scooted across, and he'd driven it into the bunker on the second, and then laid it up literally in front of us. It could not have been yeah. positioned any better. So we, that was the first time seeing him, and then obviously seeing him hit into into 12 in the actual tournament was yeah. just incredible just going back to the boards and stuff that Dave mentioned as well there's no electronic scoreboards around Augusta National so you, and there's no phones you're not allowed yeah. your phones and I think that adds so much to the tournament I know a lot of people disagree and kind of think oh it's a bit old school but you don't know what's happening yeah. until you hear a roar yeah. or you see Woods' number go from minus three to minus four and then you hear another roar you can't look ahead. You, you, you're there in the moment, and that is special. Well, even seeing it on the TV, you don't see any phones up behind tee yeah. boxes. Everyone is just is just living it. There was a, yeah. a guy at the US Open, wasn't there? Uh, yeah. I don't know if you saw the picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Every, just, single, every single yeah, person yeah. around him, <laughs> and he's just holding his beard, yeah. just yeah. like lo loving so, life. And that is that is Augusta yes, National. Absolutely. Sport. Yeah. But you're right. People see it as old fashioned and you know, need to move with the times. Mm. But why? It's yeah. It's brilliant as yeah. it is. Yeah, I agree. Like it's really what makes it makes the tournament it as well. It makes yeah. it unique compared to the other tournaments. Yeah. The only downside is you can't message people when you're in the shop saying they've only got this in certain size. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, what size do you need? Yeah. Well, they've run out. Why else? Exactly. You want? That's. Wait, they never run out. By the way. Yeah. Crazy. Unlimited stock. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Absolutely. 
So on to next year's Masters. Yeah. Have you got any picks? Like any one you really like, you're gonna go def- definitely gonna win it. Yeah, I think the heart pulls towards Rory McIlroy. I'd love McIlroy to win it. I'm a big yeah. fan. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. But I, I think Cameron Smith is right up there with one of the top top guys to beat. He's a genius around the greens, putting and chipping. You've got to be so good at around there. And he's, you know, he proved it at the Open this year that he's a major winner and can do it around a tough track. He's got a decent record else. as well. He Augusta. really does, yeah. He really does. So I think that would be my pick. Obviously, we have the Live Tour and he's on the Live Tour. What would the reaction be to a, a major winner coming from the Live Tour be? We don't know, but I, I think he'll be very difficult to beat, in my opinion. Well, he's top class, isn't he? Yeah. I, I can see someone like Mark Hauer. Yeah. Just a, point, yeah. a just a striker, isn't he? Yeah. And I think where he's, well, his weaker part of the game is the putting. Mm. I think Augusta kind of levels that out because the greens are so tricky and you've got to hit the right spots. He can do that. He can hit it into yeah. the right spots. Like his, his strokes gained with approach play and iron play will be higher than most people if you were to look over the last two or three seasons. I know this year he's not been yeah. quite where he was, but... You know, if you're that good, you you don't just fall off. No. And you know, he's, he's won he's won two majors. Yeah. One of them around St George's. You know, yeah. we, we played it last week and yeah. in very very different conditions. <laughs> tough. Um, but you know, it's a tough tough yeah. golf course. Yeah. So yeah, I would I would go with I would go with someone like Morikawa. Yeah. I just think the the putting will level itself out, and I think that's why Rory's probably got a chance as well. Yeah. Yeah. He'll it you know you look at his stats and he'll probably admit it himself. His putting yeah. has not quite been there for. Yeah. A number of years. I've you know, this year has had a great year. Yeah. It's as good yeah. as he's had a chance. Yeah. Next year. He just needs to keep it on the golf course, doesn't he? Just, yeah. You know, ten don't do ten again. Jeez, that was awful, <laughs> wasn't it? But the thing is when you stand there, you don't even you can't even see where he's hit it to. Oh uh, yeah. Like, it's off the planet. Absolutely. It is. It is and it's so planet. downhill and so punishing that yeah. That was the one place he couldn't afford to go on that particular yeah. round of golf and unfortunately he found it. Yeah, if he hits it right, it's chipping out, making yeah, bogey. exactly. And probably goes on to win it. Mm. I think it's, with your pick of, of Cam, I think it's going to be interesting what Augusta do. Yeah. Because they've not announced anything yet, which yeah. I find really surprising. Yeah. With the live guys. Mm-hmm. My, my opinion, I think they'll let the past champions and those that are exempt play but they like won't be invited to the dinner, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. But they've got to make a decision soon. We'll see. It's we'll not see. far away now. Yeah. It's really not. Well, I like your pick. I think Rory, I'm all for Rory to win it. Yeah. Like he held hold the bunker shot on 18. Yeah. On the last well, yeah him day and Morikawa, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Out, good. out the same bunker. <laughs> yeah. What a yeah. chance of that? Yeah. So hopefully he just, you know, yeah, I mean, that would hits be the great. ground running. Yeah. I'd love to see that happen. But to be fair, I'm a fanboy, so I'm going to say <laughs> that. <laughs> But yeah, on to the last question. So yeah. YGT at the Masters next year. Yeah. What to expect? What to expect? Well, I think we can both answer bits of this. I'll, yeah, uh, absolutely. I'll, you know, I put it all together, operationally make sure it works. Dave's the man when it comes to selling it. And, you know, it's just a fantastic bucket list experience. But what you can expect when you come with us is from the moment you arrive, we will look after you. Yeah, I think that's... Our biggest, our biggest kind of plus with coming with YGT is customer service. Um, from the moment you step off the plane, we'll pick you up. We'll take you to your hotel. We've got concierge there. You, you'll meet me. You'll meet Dave. You'll meet the people that you booked through. Um, transfers to Augusta National to our hospitality area, which is probably a five, 10 minute drive away, but we have personal private shuff- uh, shuttles to and from the course all day. So if you you know get a bit hot, want to come back, have a chat, have something to eat, you can do that. You can just st- stay at hospitality with us and watch the, the whole day unfold if you like, um, if you don't have a ticket. Um, but yeah, we'll have entertainment in the evenings. We- we're golf fans. Right, we put together an experience that we would like to do. Yeah, I'm going to the Masters, go and play some fantastic courses in and around the area, um, and I think that's where we've got it really right. Like I mentioned earlier on in the in the chat, we've been doing this for 10, 15 years now. Every year is a learning experience. You know, how can we make next year better for our customers? And I really believe that 2023 is going to be one of the best years to go. 
and moving forward, it's just going to get better. And that's yeah, I would agree. For the offerings that we've got for for next year, it, we've made improvements. Yeah, we've seen where the the blips, so to speak, or the mm-hmm. bumps in the road were, and we've we've eliminated them, and we've we've made it a better experience. Yeah, and that's what it is. It's a it is an experience, and you know, one thing Dan touched on there was the golf locally. You, know, you can you can play Augusta Country Club next door next if door. you want to. Yeah. So you, you can hear the roars. You know, yeah. if, if you hit a shot into one of the holes that's right by 12 <laughs> yeah. at the same time as someone else, they, <laughs> they're roaring for you. They're roaring for you. Yeah. <laughs> and you Rega- can say that. You can yeah. tell everyone yeah. that. Regardless <laughs> if you hit the green or not, they're yeah. roaring for you. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think with, with the packages we do, there's a lot of touch points with yeah. us and it's very different to a normal Your Golf Travel booking. You, know, yeah. you will meet the person that you've been in correspondence with for yeah. some people over a year. Absolutely, yeah. And, and that's really nice. So my experience this year... Uh, being in, in the Athens Hotel, the people that I'd booked, we'd have a beer in the evening. Yeah, we'd come back, we'd chat about the golf, we'd you know they'd tell me how they played at the Georgia Club, for yeah. example, one of the courses we use, which is which got great feedback. Yeah, brilliant club. And and you know we you get to do that, and yeah. I just think that with this is a very very different booking to a standard your golf travel booking. It's really nice to put face to a name. Yeah, have that chat, yeah. have that relationship. Yeah, and you know. I just think it's so important and it's, yeah. and it's great for them as well it's, it puts them at such ease absolutely it, it's all about customers having the best time and the best experience they can and us being able to deliver on that yeah so yeah so yeah bucket that is the bucket list experience <laughs> bucket list. yeah yeah so yeah if you do want to find out any more information there will be links in the description below about our master's trips but I think that concludes it I think yeah I, I, I mean you could talk all day about yeah. the Masters in Augusta yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. but I think we've you know I love it we love it, it it's an incredible place to go and one that you should cross off your bucket list 